Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and you join me here at the gate. There it is. At the edge of the field next to Tudor Towers, which is behind me. But other than show you a little bit of the countryside that lies before me near one of my properties, the purpose of this video is to address the topic of Boris Johnson, as I know that many of you in comments and emails have asked me to provide my observations about what has happened in the last few days. Before I do so, if you have not already embraced my work about Boris Johnson, I would encourage you to do so. Even if you have no interest in British politics, it helps you understand more about the formation of a narcissist, different narcissistic behaviours and indicators, enables you to understand various aspects of the narcissistic dynamic and also helps you understand the behaviours of a greater. There are three parts of the Boris Johnson, a very political narcissist. There is also Boris Johnson, it's fine, dealing with his response and reaction as a consequence of his conduct in respect of recently being fined for breaches of the Covid lockdown rules, rules of course which his own government imposed. And then there is also the analysis of the two parts, The Greater Smirks, which is the interview between him and Eddie Mayer, a journalist when he was Mayor of London, which enables you to see how he just disregards certain questions and finds it all an amusing game. Boris Johnson, of course, has resigned as leader of the Conservative Party, but remains as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, holding on until the autumn. Ordinarily, when the leader of the Conservative Party, who is the Prime Minister, resigns, they tend to go immediately, leaving the Deputy Prime Minister in charge or appointing a caretaker until a new leader of the Conservative Party has been elected through the usual process. But not Johnson. Why? Well, quite simply, the fact that he resigned is his way of asserting control by withdrawal and he engaged in plenty of blame shifting by talking about it being the evolution of Darwinianism in politics, i.e. it wasn't his fault, it's just the way that it is. He also referred to those who had stood against him as eccentric and following a herd mentality, again blame shifting. He believes that he's done nothing wrong because the rules are for the little people, as he's once said in the past. This is an individual whereby, essentially, he asserted control by withdrawal, but also as a fuck you, has remained in power until at least September or October. That way, he will be able to settle scores, greater than he is. He will have recognised all of the challenge fuel, he won't have called it as such, but he will have recognised it as such, that he has received as a consequence of the various comments and objections that have been placed against him by people that he once thought were loyal and those that confirm their status as basically being shits in his view. As a consequence of all of that, the problem that Johnson has had is that previously the construct that he generated, the bumbling Boris, which was seen as the affable bloke that you could go down the pub with and have a pint, of course, where everybody thought they were in on the joke with him, now realise actually he's been laughing at them all along which is entirely correct and is something that I've pointed out in previous videos. Not that it bothers Boris, because he just looks down his rather long nose at everybody else. The fact is, with Johnson, he created Bumbling Boris, which caused many people to think, ah, he's the type of guy I could get along with, share a joke with. He's a colourful character in a world of grey suits. But as his former boss, Sir Max Hastings, explained, the only people that actually like Boris Johnson are those who don't actually know him, which is true. He received a resounding vote in the recent general election with a majority of over 80 seats for the Conservative Party, largest majority by the Conservative Party since 1987. Members of the electorate still don't like the fact that he's gone, blaming the press, even though, of course, the press didn't cause him to engage in Partygate. The press didn't cause him to lose two by-elections recently that were held by Tory seats. The press didn't cause him to lie about the circumstances concerning Pincher, the sex case deputy whip, and his appointment, etc. The fact is, Boris Johnson realised that the tide was against him, but it was his decision to depart as leader. He won't have felt that he was forced. His narcissism caused him to take the view, this is my decision, and therefore that's why I'm going. I'm resigning. But 
there was plenty of blame shifting and belligerent responses there uh, in the process of doing all of that. And, as I've mentioned, the fact that he remains as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom until at least the autumn demonstrates once again his lack of accountability, his out and out sense of entitlement and arrogance, and the fact that he continues to assert control in that way. He simply said, OK, I choose no longer to be leader, but that's my choice, therefore that's my control, and now, but I'm still Prime Minister, and therefore he continues to assert control in that fashion. Many people would think, well, surely a greater wouldn't find himself in this position. Not necessarily so. His is such that he goes through life with almost creating a bumbling persona of an upper lesser, but it's all done in a Machiavellian way, which means that whatever shitstorm he creates, he just then walks away from. And that is the nature of Boris Johnson. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.